Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. What is your dream sports car? Is it the Porsche 911 or Lexus LC500? They're both amazing vehicles with a very different characters. Let me tell you as an engineer which one I might prefer through my formal audit of the two vehicles. Let's go. The Porsche 911 is perhaps one of the most desirable cars in the world, but many of you guys know that I was thinking of buying the Lexus LC500 which is a desirable car for most of us who love Toyota and Lexus cars. So it's very fascinating to compare the two, especially because I drove the Lexus LC500 not too long ago. Now, I don't have it side by side here, but I have a pretty good memory and I have driven both cars extensively. So I'm going to go through five key areas for comparison to help you or maybe even me decide ultimately which is the right car for you. Assuming, of course, that we can afford to buy something like this because it ain't cheap. The five things I want to compare between the two models includes the following. First, I'm going to compare the manufacturing quality in terms of the exterior and the interior and tell you which one is better made. I also have visited both factories in Japan and also in Germany, so I can give you a little bit of uh, insight as to which one would be better made, both short term and long term. Second, the design and engineering. How is the actual engineering behind the scenes in terms of the way the panels were designed and engineers in terms of parts, components and interior? Have the engineers did the right job in terms of designing the 911 or Lexus LC? That's my number two. The third criteria is the performance, which obviously is perhaps the most important one for people who want to buy something like this. I won't be able to compare them side by side in terms of zero to 60 times but I'm talking more about things like the peer handling, the character on the road, the way it connects with your hand and with your soul even. That's what I'm talking about for number three. And number four is, well, comfort, because even for a sports car, if you want to use it as a daily vehicle, you want some level of refinement in terms of NVH and level of smoothness and so forth. So I will measure some form of comfort as well between the two. And then finally, the value. And perhaps the word value is a little bit of a difficult uh, word to describe when it comes to buying a $120,000, $150,000 car. Well, there is still is something to know about uh, long-term reliability, long-term resale value, and whether or not these things will keep its value over a long period of time. So let me go over those five things right now. So the first thing I want to do in terms of criteria is quickly compare the quality of the Porsche 911 against Lexus LC and then give a ranking for both. So if you look carefully for the Porsche 911, which by the way is built in Stuttgart, uh, Germany, and I've been to that factory about 20 times and I've seen this car built over there. So I understand the manufacturing philosophy really well. And so for the most part, compared to other European uh, sports cars or exotic cars, 911 is one of the best built vehicle. You can tell in terms of the paint job, in terms of panel alignment, and also the gap is very good. It's very consistent. In fact, about three millimeter between the hood and the front fender, although the alignment uh, is not perfect, but that's something that they can adjust at the dealership. And this is all one piece here. So now you go down to the front fender and the front door and that quality is substantially better than some of the exotic sports cars I've seen which are often handmade but not always well made. This one here again paint job is really good very little orange peel very consistent paint and the gloss is uh, perfect almost so the quality is excellent and it shows in terms of both exterior and interior so if I look at the interior very quickly and all of the trims and fit and finish is excellent you can see the stitching especially it's really well done something that they are very good at because i went to visit the actual leather stitching uh, sub factory in stuttgart as well and they do this absolutely amazing well better than most other luxury or high-end vehicles so what i'm going to do is i say that i'll give um, 4.3 out of 5.0 for exterior quality not perfect yet but pretty close uh, and i did hear a little bit of a squeak during my drive so I'm going to say 4.0 for the interior uh, out of the 5.0. What about the Lexus LC? Well, the Lexus LC is built in Motomachi factory where I have also been there many times, but it's built in a very specialized area that is managed by what we call Takumi members. And Takumi members have 30, 35 years of experience and they can build these vehicles at the highest quality. So in terms of exterior quality, when I went to check the actual um, Lexus LC, zero defect perfect fit and finish and the gaps are often three millimeters or less unheard of in the vehicle of this price range so i would give it 
a 4.7 out of 5.0 for exterior quality for Lexus LC. It's not 5.0 only because higher end, more expensive models do have better paint job. And in terms of interior fit and finish, well, it's second to none. It's absolutely top notch and definitely slightly better than the Porsche 911. Uh, although I would say the Porsche 911 has a bit of a, a character feel, a bit of a retro feel, and therefore you want to forgive them sometime for not having a perfect, perfect fit. So I would give 4.8 out of 5.0 for interior quality for Lexus LC500. So that's my first ranking. Now let's take a look at the engineering and design of the two vehicles. What can you say? The Porsche 911 is the classic, retro, yet modernized design that gets attention everywhere. Even though there are so many 911s on the road, especially here in the West Coast in Vancouver, people still wave hands, come and say hi. You know what? Most people just love the design of a 911. This will not look outdated 10, 15, 20 years down the road. And that's the beauty of the 911. So in terms of the overall design of the 911 compared to LC500, even though I love the kind of radical design of the LC500, I have to admit the 911's classic design is what I fall in love with. The LC500 is very modernized, it looks great from any angle, and it has a bit of a futuristic, very trendy look, but it might not look all that great 10, 15 years down the road because it might look a bit outdated at that point. So those are some of my comments in terms of exterior design, in terms of general engineering, and that includes the design of the panels, the way components fit, the way these things are designed in terms of, again, parts fit, uh, also the panel design, the actual engineering of the uh, roof, in this case for Targa, and how everything was engineered to create uh, both beauty inside and outside. I'm going to have to say that the LC500 is definitely a little bit better because one is handcrafted literally by Takumi members, but also the engineering was done very carefully by Toyota Lexus engineers to create a very rigid body uh, that is second to nine in the world. And you can tell when you drive the LC500, it has a very stiff body and there's absolutely no squeaks and rattles. So for design and engineering perspective, I give Porsche 4.5 out of 5.0, just because of this amazing design that they have been able to keep for so many years. And I give Lexus LC a very close 4.3 out of 5 for the exterior. Now the interior is a little bit different because I'm not too crazy about the LC500 interior. In terms of the way they designed it, it has a swoopy look very cool and trendy again, but not as practical and not as up-to-date as the Porsche 911, which not only did it keep some of the retro feel, but it's thoroughly modern with the full digital display. And there's a rumor that uh, a new version or facelifted version of 911 is coming out that will have even larger and more up-to-date infotainment system. So uh, you know what, in terms of design and engineering, the interior of the Porsche 911 is definitely better than the Lexus LC500. I give these guys a solid 4.0. I give Lexus LC maybe 3.8 just because uh, it's a bit outdated inside and honestly it doesn't look all that interesting. So that's my rating for the interior and exterior design and engineering. The third category is performance and this is going to be the most controversial and the most difficult one to assess because both cars are absolutely amazing on the road but for different reasons. In terms of handling, there's no question that there's nothing that comes close to Porsche 911 because the way the Porsche engineers designed the steering feel, it feels exactly like the old Porsche 911, which had a full hydraulic steering. Um, even though this is a modernized version of that, it still retains most of what 911s used to feel. And you know what? There's almost no cars out there that can replicate this feel. It has a right amount of road feel. The steering is heavy enough, but not too heavy. And around the corners, oh my goodness, it just absolutely grabs everything and it stays totally flat. In comparison, the Lexus LC500 was never meant to be a pure sports car, more of a grand touring sports car, a grand touring coupe with a design aspect of a sports car. So that has a different intention and therefore I find the steering feel on the Lexus to be not so good. In fact, I would give it pretty low score because it's a little bit numb, much like what I found in my Lexus IS500 I own, and it's not very communicative. It's a pretty fast steering, it's pretty accurate steering, but there's not enough sensation coming to my hand through the steering, and that's something that uh, Lexus really needs to work on for future generation of sports cars, but it's something that Lexus is not very good at. So in terms of steering fuel and handling, the Porsche 911 get 4.8 out of 5.0 from my perspective. 
Obviously, if you go to Porsche 911 Turbo with even more power, it's probably close to 5.0, but this is almost perfect. And in terms of the Lexus LC, I'm gonna have to give it about 3.8 again because the steering lacks uh, feel even though it's precise that one is something they really have to improve and work on so that's the steering side now the engine side is a bit more difficult to explain because 911 have so many different variations of the engine this one is Carrera S so it's not top of the line but it's got so much power and torque already and because it's turbocharged the engine you step on the gas it just takes off like a beast it's been turbocharged since 2017 and it brings a very different character to the 911 than it used to before it was turbocharged. Now what about the Lexus LC500? Well that has the beloved 5 liter V8 engine, naturally aspirated, no turbocharger and it's the same engine I had in my Lexus IS500 so I know that engine very well and it is perhaps the most beautiful naturally aspirated engine in the world it has an amazing ability to go up through the rpm range with refinement and smooth net and yes it's got a punch when you step on it however it is not the same feel with something like a 911 which has a turbocharger in it because this one at the low end you step on the gas it just takes off because turbocharger kicks in with no delay compared to Lexus LC500, which has to build up a little bit because RPM has to get up higher before you maximize the torque. And even though it's a beautiful engine, and I love that engine, I will have to say it is more fun to drive the 911's turbocharged engine for sure. So it comes down to a bit of a character thing. You might prefer the natural aspirated engine and the organic feel of that, or you might want immediate power and torque and be able to take off, which would be better in 911. So it's a little bit of a hard comparison, but overall, in terms of the engine and the powertrain, I give the 911 a 4.5, uh, almost perfect score, but not quite there yet, just because there are 911s with more power and torque. And then for Lexus, I'm going to give it slightly higher 4.6, just because I really like that 5 liter V8 engine. It's an absolute delight to drive, and the feel is something that cannot be found anywhere else. The fourth evaluation criteria is the comfort level. And I know it's kind of weird to talk about comfort level in a sports car, but what I mean by it is whether or not it has a refinement and a smoothness to allow you to use this as a daily vehicle if you chose to do that. And also another important topic is NVH, which stands for noise, vibration, and harshness, because even for a sports car, you don't want squeaks and rattle going around because that will really annoy you. From this perspective, well, Lexus obviously wins because the ride quality and the refinement on the LC500 is second to none. It's extremely smooth, even though it's stiff because it is a sport T car or sports car, uh, it is absolutely refined over any kind of surfaces and you definitely can drive that as a daily car. On the Porsche 911, the ride is actually surprisingly smooth and it stays very controlled, but it is quite bumpy. For obvious reason, it's got a really low profile 2021 inch staggered tires and this one has a Goodyear Eagle F1 tires which are not my favorite and they tend to get very restless over bumpy roads so the ride quality is not so good and obviously if you were to drive this as a daily car in a rough road or over bumpy road you might get tired pretty quickly unless you change the tires let's say for winter use with something that's a little bit more forgiving then it might be okay so in terms of ride quality the winner is the Lexus LC500, which I will give a 4.5 out of 5. And then for Porsche, I give it 3.7 out of 5 because it can get quite restless over bumpy road. Now, what about NVH or noise, vibration, harshness? Obviously, this is areas of Lexus expertise, and therefore the LC500 wins hands down in terms of absolute refinement because you cannot find a single sound of anything. No squeaks, no rattles, absolutely nothing. The car is super quiet, except for engine noise, and it stays very, very smooth and quiet on the highway street. Compare that to Porsche 911, in which there's a little bit of squeaks and rattles, especially from the, some of the plastic pieces. But you know what? Most of the time, you hear this beautiful engine, so you might not notice it, and therefore it's kind of okay. But as an engineer, if I were to just do a direct comparison, the Lexus LC500 gets 4.8 for NVH, and this one gets about... Uh, 4.0. It's actually pretty good, but it can get a little bit noisy and so forth. So uh, the Lexus LC500 is better than the Porsche 911. But you also find that this thing is surprisingly refined and therefore it can be used as a daily car.
The fifth and the last criteria is value, which is something that maybe you don't talk about when you're buying an expensive sports car like this. But what I mean by that is in comparison to other sports cars, does this provide better value or better pricing? That's first thing. And second thing, is it a good investment over longer term? Does it maintain its value or maybe even appreciate? From that perspective, the Porsche 911 is obviously the winner here. Over a long period of time, it tends to keep its value. And recently, the 911s are appreciating like crazy due to shortages. So you can't really go wrong if you buy a really good, either a secondhand 911s or even a new one, and you keep it for 10 years or so, it will keep a good value for you. And it's always going to be that way for Porsche 911s. The Lexus LC500, on the other hand, is a bit more difficult to assess. But if you look at the used car market, they actually depreciate quite a bit more than I expected. So a $120,000 or $130,000 Lexus LC500, uh, easily selling for eighty dollars to $90,000 after just a few years. I think mainly because people don't understand the LC500 and therefore it's not as much in demand in comparison to something like 911. So the overall resale value over a longer period of time for LC500 can't compete with 911. Although who knows, 10, 20, 30 years down the road, something like LC can become a collector's item because it's so rare. So in terms of value for the money, I would give Porsche 911 uh, 3.8 out of 5.0 because it is a very expensive vehicle and there are many cars you can buy with similar performance for a lot less money. And then for um, Lexus, I would say it's about the same, maybe 3.6 out of 5.0 in terms of price, once again, at over $100,000. There are so many performance cars you can buy that might even give you better performance than these vehicles. But in terms of resale value, which is also part of this criteria, the Porsche 911 does pretty good. I would give it 4.3 out of 5.0, simply because it tends to either keep the same value or appreciate. And for Lexus, I would say 3.9 out of 5.0. Uh, once again, because it's better than some other cars out there, um, but uh, it's not as good as something like Porsche 911. So those are the five criteria that I use to compare the Lexus LC500 to the Porsche 911. At the end of the day, which one would I buy for the same money? That's a very tough question. My heart kind of goes to the Lexus LC500 for the unique trendy modern styling and also the fact that it's built in the Motomach factory by Takumi members uh, obviously is very special very unique and something that I will fall in love with over and over again but if you're asking me which car is more fun to drive and provides better performance for the dollar there's no question that the Porsche 911 still stands at the very top in terms of the performance in terms of driving character and the amount of enjoyment that it gives you on the road so I'm going to have to say in this case, if I were given the choice, and it's about the same price, I will pick the Porsche 911 over the Lexus LC500. But who knows, my heart still goes out the LC500. So if I find a really good used one, I might just end up buying one. What do you guys think? Which one do you guys like? Let me know in the comments below. If you're able to give me a thumbs up and subscribe, that'll be truly appreciated. Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.